sentences. We're going to start seated and we're going to be on the floor pretty much the whole time today. So get a comfortable position for your viewing of your screen from the, from the floor. And we're going to start with a breathing exercise because I've been reading a lot about how it's important to prepare your lungs in case you should somehow encounter the COVID coronavirus out wherever you're out and about, if ever you're out and about. So one of the things that we do in yoga is we do the three-part breathing. And we haven't really been talking about breathing much as we've been going through our practices. So I thought we'd focus on the three-part breathing at our start, and then we're going to do some lung opening, chest expanding, backward bends on the floor this morning that are gentle, and ones that actually are being recommended by the people who are taking care of COVID patients when they're recuperating, and they recommend some of the exercises on the belly. So these are precautionary things that we all should have in mind just in case we or somebody we know is unfortunate enough to encounter some virus out and about. So we're going to start in just a seated cross-leg position. If you're uncomfortable cross-leg, you can extend your legs out in front in staff position. If you're uncomfortable sitting on the floor, you can be in a chair, or you can actually be up in mountain pose if you want to be standing for this first practice. The alignment in seated positions is exactly the same as you do in mountain pose, except that you don't want to be allowing your, your legs to be supporting you. It's the sitting bones instead. So get connected into those two, protru two protruding bones underneath you and let them be the center of your focus on the mat. If you're uncomfortable there and you need a little bit more pelvic opening, you can put a little padding behind you. That sometimes helps to get that pelvis a little bit more comfortable in a seated position. And then ribs in and up with the core active, but not clenched because we want the belly to move so our diaphragm can expand as we breathe. Shoulders up, back, and down, and the shoulders stacked right above the hips as you're seated. Crown is reaching to the ceiling, so as always, the spine is stretching apart while you're practicing your yoga. And then just get into a comfortable breathing position as you begin. Inhaling deeply and exhaling completely. And in yoga, we normally just breathe through the nose. So we'll keep the breath through the nose only for today's practice. So if you want, you can bring your fingers to your lower belly, under your waist, under your navel. And as you breathe in, see if that diaphragm is dropping down enough that that belly area is kind of expanding out. And then as you exhale, sinking back in. And just allow that breath to come all the way down into that lowest part of the lungs, expanding, and then exhaling and contracting. And as the diaphragm pushes down, it pushes all those organs out of place. As that breath pushes up and out, the organs sink back in. That's what causes that expansion and contraction. And then while you're doing that, keeping that whole lower body breathing, move your ribs, your fingers up onto your ribs. Because after you expand the lower lungs, you want to keep expanding into your rib area. So again, just like we did before with the fingers opening and exhaling down, we want the inhalation and then more inhalation so the fingers on the ribs also stretch apart. And then on the exhalation again, it comes in and the belly comes in as you completely expel the breath. And once more, breathing in, everything expanding, exhaling, everything sinking back in. And then the final third part of the yoga breath is that inhalation to the lower, to the ribs, and finally to the upper chest, the shoulders, the collar bones. So that it kind of rises up through that upper back, upper body above the heart 
And then again, exhaling, everything sinking back in. And if you want to get a little bit more upper body expansion, you can pull those shoulders slightly back and the back shoulder blades down as you breathe in. And then as you exhale, you can let it kind of collapse a little bit more through that whole front of your body. So just keep doing that breathing for a few moments while I mute everybody, which I forgot to do. So go ahead and breathe deep, exhaling fully. And what they're saying now is that the breathing is really important throughout preparations and actual recuperation from breathing instability in the COVID-19 process. So you want to make sure that your lungs fully expand and exhale completely so that you're releasing all that carbon dioxide. One of the things that researchers are finding is that while the inhalation oxygen flow in is being somewhat problematic, the exhalation of the carbon dioxide is really, really a problem. I happen to have three strikes against me on the breathing because I have allergies. I have non-allergic rhinitis, which is just a constant runny nose or post-nasal drip, and I have asthma. And what I found when I first got my asthma diagnosis is that the problem with asthma is the exhalations aren't effective. And it's apparently similar in the COVID process. So we want to keep this breathing as part of our focus. And then we're going to start with, again, a spine warm-up. So go ahead and reverse the position of your legs if you're cross-legged so that you get into your non-habitual position. It may feel weird, but that's okay. We want to balance the body. And then again, sinking into the sitting bones up through the spine. You can bring your hands next to you, palms up, and we're going to inhale and just bring the arms right above our shoulders. And as you exhale, exhale and bring them back down. And then again, inhaling, arms up, exhaling, and release. And keep that three-part breathing going as much as you can. And then you can put your hands cupped around your knees. We're going to pull the ribs back as you exhale and round forward with the forehead coming down and the spine just reaching back, especially through that solar plexus area, middle of your body, torso. And then bring that solar plexus forward, ribs forward, heart expanding, looking up toward the ceiling as your shoulder blades drop and your shoulders pull maybe a little bit back, coming into a little bit of a back bend in the spine. And then again, exhaling, rounding forward, inhaling into the back bend. Keep that upper body heart center as your focus as you go through that range of motion and breath flow. And then exhale completely as you come down, inhale and sit back up to your straight position. And then bring one hand to the floor next to you the other arm out to the side, palm toward the floor, and then turn the palm up and bring that arm right over your shoulder, and then slide over to the side without twisting, coming into that rib opening side stretch. And see if you can breathe into the ribs, into the lungs on that side of your body, you're stretching. If you love that stretch and you've got your arm fully extended out and you want more, you can bring the <coughs> excuse me elbow down and the arm by your ear, so you get a little bit more stretch as you keep that hip you're leaning away from, sitting bone pushing down into the mat. And then inhale and come back up. Exhale your arm down. And take a moment to feel your body along that side. And switch your legs again, just so that we're keeping them a little bit more fluid. And then we're going to keep that opposite hand down, other arm out to the side, turning the palm up bringing the arm right over your shoulder, sliding into that side stretch. <clears throat> and again, maximize as much as your body wants, sliding that hand, hand out as far along the mat as you want to go, or bringing the elbow down to the floor for more stretch through your ribs, through your spine, 
breathing into that other side of your body. And notice one side has a little bit more limited lung capacity than the other, so you might notice a little bit more or less breath on this version. And then again, inhaling, come up and release that arm. Take a moment there, feeling your sitting bones up through the spine, a little bit more energized. And we're going to do our twist next. So again, hands next to you, inhaling them over your shoulders. And this time as you exhale, turn to one side, bring your hand to the knee and the other hand behind you onto the mat. So you're turning your hips, your ribs, and your shoulder, not just your head, going into the twist. And again, you can leverage on that knee if you love twists and exhale and deepen. Or you can just hold it there, breathing and relaxing with the exhalations, allowing the ligaments to release and moving into your twist. And then as you breathe in, release your arms and come back to the center. And again, let's switch the legs around for the opposite twist. So sitting bones connecting, arms at your side. Inhale, arms right over your shoulder. Exhale, turn to the other side, hand coming toward the knee and the other hand close to your body on the mat behind you. Sitting bones connect, stretch up through that spine so it has room to move. Exhale, hips, ribs, shoulder, deepen into that twist as much as your body wants to go. Take a breath. Exhale, maximize as much or as little as your body needs this morning. And again, breathing in, stretch up, and as you exhale, turn back to the center. Take a moment, just feel your body, noticing all that energy flowing through. And come out of your seated position, and we're going to start in table. Move the hands a little bit toward the edges of the mat and in front of you. And then drop your hips down and just roll your body onto your belly and come all the way to the floor. Hands along your sides and forehead to the mat. You can turn your head to one side, shoulders down, feet slightly apart, coming into a resting crocodile. And then on an exhalation, turn your head to the other side so your neck gets evenly stretched as we're in this position. And then bring your forehead to the floor and extend your arms on the floor out in front of you. So the palms are down to the mat and the hands are right straight in front of your shoulders. And then take your fingers back where the heel of your palm is and bring your hand back closer to your body, bending the elbows out toward the edges of the mat. And then starting with your Forehead on the floor, just relax into your hips, into your lower body. It's going to do nothing for the cobra that we're doing. And then as you inhale, rotate your face to look forward. Crown up towards the ceiling. And then tuck your chin back toward your chest just a little bit. And move the chest forward and up, letting your spine support you, not your arms. So expand through the chest, through the lungs. Lengthen up through the crown. I like back bends. If I hold it too long for you, just exhale and bring your forehead back down. Otherwise, one more breath, expanding the chest, and then exhale and pivot all the way till your forehead touches. Take a moment there and relax, breathing. You can adjust into those hips and legs a little bit deeper if you'd like. And then again, bring the fingers back where the heel of the palm was and bring your hand closer toward your body, elbows going further out off the mat. So again, we're bring, beginning with the forehead on the floor. Inhaling, rotate your face forward, crown up to the ceiling. Tuck your chin back toward your chest. Stay there or chest forward and up and bring your body up a little bit more into that back bend in the upper body. And just notice where that contraction is. First time it was probably near your neck, upper shoulder area. This time more along the shoulder, maybe a little bit lower. And then as you exhale once more, come on back down, forehead to the mat. Take a moment to breathe and relax. 
And one more time, fingers into the heel of your palm, hand back. Should be about at the level of your temples that your hands are right in front of your shoulders with those elbows still pushing out further to the side. And again, starting relaxing in the hips, forehead on the mat. Inhale, face to the front, crown towards the ceiling. Tuck the chin in, get that back of the neck stretching nicely. Chest forward and up and coming into a little bit higher version of this low cobra. Should be about shoulder blade level that you're feeling that contraction behind you. Take one more breath, chest forward and up, crown to the ceiling. And then exhaling again, forehead to the mat. Now, notice where the circulation seems a little bit more on the back of your body. That's where your major contraction was during that back bend. This last time, you have a choice. This version of the cobra is wonderful because you can choose where you want that contraction to maximize along your spine. If you want it along the shoulder blade area, keep your hand closer to your temple area. If you want it a little bit higher in the upper heart center area, move your hands out just a little bit. Or extend them even further to get that neck and shoulder as the maximum point of your contraction. So pick your point. Put your hands there. Elbows are still bent out to the side. Hips are relaxed. Legs down into the mat. Forehead on the floor. And one more time. Inhaling. Face to the front. Crown to the ceiling. Chin back toward your chest a little bit. Stretch the back of your neck. Stay there or come up a little bit further. And notice where you maximize that contraction. If that wasn't the place you wanted and you wanted it higher toward the neck, Exhale back down and move the hands further away. Or if you wanted it more into the middle of your back, bring the hands a little closer to you. And then again, face to the front, crown up, and maximize however much in whichever position you prefer. And once again, exhaling, coming back with your forehead to the mat. Just take a moment to observe where that contraction was as that circulation is maximized. And then bringing your hands under your shoulders, push up and back into a child's pose, letting your back round through that upper shoulder and back area, forehead toward the floor. And let your whole back get a good forward bend stretch after those backward bends. Take a couple moments to breathe, just letting everything relax. And then bringing your arms out in front of you towards the sides of the mat. We're going to pivot up again, hips down towards the floor, and roll your body back into resting crocodile. Head to one side, arms, hands, palms up, shoulders down, hips relaxing. And then exhaling, turn your head to the opposite side. And just let your body release and relax into resting crocodile a moment. So the next thing we're going to do is another version of Cobra. It's called the Sphinx position. So again, the hips and legs do nothing. Just settle into your pelvis, into your legs, relaxing. Turn your forehead again toward the mat. And then bring your arms in close to your thighs. So the elbows are by your ribs. Your hands are palms down next to your ears toward your temples. Keep the arms right where they are. And inhale, rotating your face to the front, crown toward the ceiling, just like we did before. Again, tuck your chin a little bit back toward your chest so the neck keeps stretching, chest forward and up. Now, you should have no pressure in your arms and hands. The spine should be supporting you in this back bend as you breathe deeply. And then kind of pull the elbows back toward your hips and in toward your ribs letting that chest expand maybe a little bit more as you lift maybe a little higher with the power and support of your spine. So take a breath, coming up as high as you like into that upper body for the chest, for the back bend in the chest. And then exhaling, bring your body slowly back, forehead to the mat. And again, just take a moment there and breathe. 
kind of relax through the hips, through the buttocks. Let your whole lower body sink. And we're going to do that just one more time. So again, elbows in towards your side, palms down flat. Keep the hands right where they are. Pull the elbows in and back as if you're making a motion with your arms, but you're not moving them. Inhaling, face to the front, crown to the ceiling. Chin tucks back slightly as you lift your heart forward and up, coming into that sphinx position. Imagine you're in Egypt in the desert, guarding those pyramids. Take a breath again, expand fully through the lungs, and as you exhale, slowly pivot down. When your forehead touches, just relax. Slide the hands back toward your shoulders, and again, push back into child's pose and relax. So take a couple of breaths here. If you like that lower back to get a little more stretch, bring your knees together as you're in your child's pose. That will maximize the stretch in your lower back. If you're having problems breathing while you're in that position, you can separate your knees, which allows the lungs to expand more. So your choice, how you work your child's pose. And then inhaling, sitting up, Coming into a seated position, we're again going to come into a cross leg position on the mat. So find your favorite position and then reverse your legs because we habitually put the same leg in front or on top. And once again, just allow yourself to sink into your sitting bones up through the crown. And then lift your knees and bring your legs out into staff position. We're going to do one brief twist, and then we're going to do a meditation that's a little bit different. So take one leg and bend the knee and pull it in close to your body. Wrap your arms around. And then keeping the opposite arm around, bring your same arm as your leg up. Lengthen through your spine from your sitting bones up. And exhale, follow that hand around into the twist, bringing it to the floor close to your body. Keep wrapping that front arm around your knee, pulling the knee in, lengthening from the sitting bones up through the crown, exhaling and turning into that knee, moving your hips and ribs and shoulder deeper into your twist. Don't forget that front leg. The toes should be up towards the ceiling, heel pressing out. And then releasing the hand behind you, bring it back to shoulder level. Follow it, exhaling around to the center. And release your arm and your leg back into staff. Sink into the sitting bones, up through the spine. Just feel that twist energy kind of activating in the middle of your skull for that meditative energy. And we'll do the opposite side to balance it out. So other leg comes in. Again, adjust onto the sitting bones. Wrap your arms around. Pull it in. Opposite arm around. Knee arm out. Stretch up through your spine. And exhale. Follow that hand around to the back for your twist. Drop the hand to the floor. Sitting bones connect. Reach up through the crown. Pull that front knee in. Exhale. Turn your whole body deeper as far as you want into the twist. Take a breath, just exhale and relax into it. And then inhaling, bring the hand behind you up. Exhale, follow it back around to the center and release your hands and your leg. So options for our meditation, you can stay seated in staff position or you can cross your legs or you can sit in a chair. So if you do cross your legs, remember your habitual, go ahead, switch to the other cross. Sink into your sitting bones, lengthen up through your crown. And we're going to take the left hand and make a little cup out of your hand with the fingers all together and the thumb along the outside of the fingers. And then this is a personal treasure 
meditation because we're all kind of thinking about things that are important to us as we shelter for safety in our homes by ourselves. So if there's some particular feeling or some particular person or some particular thing that you think is really important for you to hold in your heart, just imagine that that person or thing or concept is now focused in the palm of your hand. And we're going to treasure it like a special treasure by bringing the other hand over. And the fingers of the right hand will go along the thumb of your lower hand. And it's like a little cage sort of shape that you've made with a cupped hand below and a cupped hand over it, holding it in like a special fluttery butterfly. And that precious thing is what we're going to meditate on. So just take a few moments to close your eyes and think about what that special concept person thing is and how important it is to you and how you want that to be in your life, in your world. And just take a few moments to breathe into that feeling, into that idea, allowing it to expand in your awareness. Just close your eyes, focusing inward, breathing into it, feeling into it, noticing how it makes you feel, noticing how important it is, noticing how you want it to grow in your awareness. And then imagine that special treasure that you're holding becoming pure energy. And allow your hands to bring that pure energy into your heart. And take a few moments again to contemplate on the awareness of that special treasure now in your heart. Just keep breathing deeply, knowing that that treasure is always there for you to access in your heart. You can allow your 
hands to drop to your lap, to your knees. And just again, take a few moments there. Feeling your treasure activated in your heart center. And then when you're ready, only when you're ready, in opening your eyes, drawing energy and awareness back to your mind, back to the room, back to your body. And just move your fingers, stretch your legs out, do whatever you need to do to return to the moment and prepare for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me this morning. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And I'm going to see about maybe expanding our time limit so that we don't get cut off like we did last time. And if I do, I will send you a new link that you will need to use for coming back to practice next time. So thanks for joining me. And I'll see you next time.